Aloha, everyone. How are you doing today? I'm Joey Roper here with True Aloha Kauai, a video podcast and radio program here on the island of Kauai. And we are excited to be with you here today. I am here once again with my co-host, Lon Malafit. Aloha, Lon. Aloha, Joey. <laughs> Aloha, how's it? <laughs> it's going good. It's going good. Um, well, guys, we're just going to get into this today. We are super excited. Um, we are starting a brand new series, our first true series after our little introduction series, but we're going to be talking about how the gospel came to the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, before we do that, we're going to um, share something. Also, another exciting thing is that we are connecting with um, a clothing company and just blessed by them. They're called Aloha Ke Akua, right? Yes. All right. Love God. Love, Love God. God. Aloha Ke Akua. And... Um, yeah, we just want to kind of first of all share with you about this clothing company uh, located here on the Hawaiian Islands, I believe on the island of Maui, correct? Yes, that's yes. correct. Up country you, Maui, Calvary Chapel, up country Maui. All right. Pastor Rick Nagoda. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. So we just want to say and have a shout out to this company that you can find more of their products that uh, pair with the Hawaiian language, the Hawaiian culture, and the Bible. And you can find it at Aloha. Uh, KeakuaClothing.com, and the cool thing is, if you use the code True Aloha Kauai, no spaces, all caps, you get to have ten percent off on your first uh, purchase online. Nice. So it's always great to get a good deal. Yeah, save a little bit of money. Sounds like the Kamaaina deal. Yes, ten percent off. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a package deal. <laughs> yeah. So we're just thankful for these guys. Uh, we reached out to them, and they've been listening in. Um, been talking to the son of your buddy yes. who runs the company uh, through social media and he's been uh, encouraging me um, in many different ways and so they're just blessing us and uh, so first let's talk about briefly these shirts mm -hmm. um, Lon teach me I want to learn the language I want to learn how to pronounce things so what is my shirt I obviously know it says right here let us pray so I know what it says but how do I how do I say it? how do, how do people pronounce it? Go for it, brother. <laughs> I'm reading it upside down. That's the problem. <laughs> Us local people love to hear people from the mainland come over to try and mention yeah Waikiki and uh, <laughs> Hana Pee Pee and all. That. <laughs> well, the good thing is this. I'll say this. You know, um, as those of you know, I was a uh, my family and I we were missionaries in Germany, mm. but before that, in high school. I grew up as being the only white guy with all the Mexicans. Nice. And uh, my first day at soccer practice, my freshman year, I was literally the only white guy. And the coach said, Joey, these are my last words in English. You're the only one here that doesn't speak Spanish. Mm. You are in Spanish class, correct? I said, yes. And he said, learn our language. Mm. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, learn in class, ask the guys, but I'm not speaking any more English. Wow. So there I was, and I was like, okay. <laughs> you figured it out eventually, So I had huh? to figure it out. I had to figure it out. And um, so I, this is nothing new to me, and one of the things I know with learning a language is, one, it takes time, but two, you're going to have to look and sound like a fool at times mm -hmm. to say, look, I'm not afraid to just try this. Right. So, And that happens here as well. Good. Really. <laughs> so here we go. Um, e pule ka ko u. There you go. Say now, how do you say it smoothly, though? No, it's a pule kako. A pule kako. There you go. There we go. So let us pray. Yes. And your shirt, it just says the name of the company, Aloha Keakua. Yeah. And uh, so that means love God, let us pray. Great reminders. <laughs> yes. Right? Um, about being anxious for nothing but in everything through prayer and supplication to mm -hmm. let a request be made known to God. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just Philippians 4. Great verse uh, reminder as uh, I needed that even this morning. Yeah. Just been, I've been anxious about some things in my heart, mind, and life. And um, it's just so great that we can come to the Lord yeah. and say, God, I need help. Yeah, and he, it pleases the Father yeah. when we go to Him, when we start communicating, talking to Him. So 
Amen. Such a, a beautiful way to have fellowship with God. Amen. So guys, go to Aloha Keakua Clothing. Dot com and uh, again use your code true aloha uh, all caps no space get 10 percent off all right lon so today we are starting our series this the series called the hawaiian i don't know the hawaiian history yes. right how the gospel came to the hawaiian islands and as i kind of in introducing it you're going to be doing a lot of the talking i want to yeah. share a couple of things before we get into it and that is, is that one, I want to not just play the role, because I am. I'm going to be a student, learning from you, hearing from you. I know you've been studying this a lot. You know a lot of things. You've brought a lot of information to share with us. But I kind of want to do my best part to not just be a student on my own, but to be um, kind of representing those who are listening mm -hmm. and those who are viewing um, to, to be hearing from you and to be asking questions and engaging mm -hmm. with you. And so uh, one thing, again, in having been a missionary, a great thing and an important topic is always learning the history and learning the culture. Mm -hmm. um, my experience has been when you spend the time, and it takes years <laughs> to do this, yeah. um, to learn history Learn the culture, learn the language. Mm -hmm. These three things are key points. Yes. Um, with any missionary, I would say, my friends that are just moved to Germany and now about a year ago, they're in their German classes right now. And I just tell them, keep doing what you're doing now is going to affect the, the long run. Yeah. Don't rush this process. I know it's a hard process, but it affects the long run. So here on the Hawaiian Islands, um, let's start, you know, Lon, you know, why don't you just take it over? How, what did God do? How did it start? I know yeah. last week we kind of talked about Acts 28, you know, the gospel, the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit. And around a little over now, 200 years ago, God brings the gospel to the whole island. Yeah. Go yeah. for it. So, um, when we look at Christian Hawaiian history, we must look at it through the biblical history mm. so the biblical worldview um and um you know like you said acts 28 when paul shared the gospel with the le leaders of israel the uh, people of israel uh, as they rejected paul didn't stop paul continued to the gentile nations mm. and he continued to proclaim uh, the good news of jesus christ and so from that point on uh, it ends at 28 so i call it uh, Acts 29, what happens? Because the Holy Spirit continues its work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's so uh, perfect. You know, we're talking about the, what the Holy Spirit did, mm -hmm. who it is, who he is, and how he works. And uh, so as, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that the Holy Spirit did before the gospel, the Bible, and God's word and his people came to the islands in the year 1820. And so I'm going to be sharing. There's so many details, uh, Joey. We don't have much time to share all of the details, but I'm mm -hmm. just going to do an overview now. And maybe the next two episodes, we can okay. kind of break it down and spend a little bit more time. That's great. But basically, the um, Captain Cook arrived in the year 1778. Mm -hmm. And what that did was it opened up uh, Hawaii in the middle of the Pacific. Pacific Ocean to the trade routes between Spain, uh, England, France, Russia, and America. And so Hawaii being in the middle of Asia and America, um, trading ships as uh, Captain Cook documented uh, and mapped out the Pacific Ocean, um, it put Hawaii on the map. Mm. And so trading ships on their way between continents were able to uh, restock provisions, and food and clothing, shelter, yeah. and at the same time uh, pick up a few uh, helpers, laborers, trade, uh, sailors, seamen at the same time. Probably as well take a break. Yeah, take a <laughs> break. And when they arrived, the people here wanted everything that was on the boat. Everything. Hmm. Because, uh, you know, metal was not produced there. 
Yeah. And so tools, weapons, um, even uh, boxes that could be used as furniture, um, tables, you know, boxes, mm -hmm. crates could be used as tables. Yeah. Um, nails, you know, simple things like that could be used. So the arrival of Captain Cook is what put Hawaii on the map and is what God used uh, to uh, bring the gospel here hmm. to Hawaii. How did he do it? Well, there were Christians uh, who were uh, sailors, traders, um, from back then, 1778, all the way up to uh, the arrival. And so there were Christians here and there. Um, and when they arrived, uh, the Hawaiians could see that these uh, foreigners had uh, paper. They had maps. They could write. They could read. And uh, the, the king, the Ali, wanted to learn how to read. And right, mm -hmm. and the, the Ali'i recognized that this world was a lot bigger than um, they thought, uh, because there are different kinds of uh, ships from different countries traveling to and fro uh, Hawaii. So let me ask you real quick. Sure. I'm just going to interject because when you say these different Hawaiian words, one I don't know what yeah. they are or what they mean. So, and I think it could be oh, helpful okay. for those who are so Ali'i. Ali. Ali. Ali is the monarchy. Okay. The ruling chiefs, the kings, queens, uh, I believe the the religious leaders, the military leaders. Kalani Moku was one of the military leaders. Okay. Uh, Heva, Heva um, was the uh, high priest, uh, the Kahuna Nui. Uh, and of course, the monarchy, kings and queens, who have the highest power. Uh, not only uh, administrative, political power, but religious power as well. Okay. And so um, Captain Cook was the opening uh, for people to travel through Hawaii. And as uh, they traveled through, um, things started to happen. King Kamehameha uh, started to uh, you know, um, attempt to unite the Hawaiian Islands. And he did. Uh, he united uh, the Hawaiian Islands. Um, uh, prior to that, 1805, uh, Kamuali, our own king for this island, uh, on the island, island of Kauai. Kauai. Yes, okay. island of Kauai, our own king. Okay. Back in 1805, he sent his six-year-old son, Humehume is his name, to, uh, to with one of the... Tri uh, trading captains mm -hmm. uh, in hopes that his son would receive a formal education mm. in the United States because they knew they needed to be prepared for this new world mm. of ships with with weapons. Mm. Um, this, uh, they need to protect themselves, they need to lead and defend themselves, and they wanted to be able to uh, deal with these outside um, uh, ships and captains um, w with, with with wisdom. And so in preparation for that, our king sent his six-year-old son wow. with a captain to go back to the United States uh, for a formal education. Rest now, what, <laughs> re what, did we, what did our king do in exchange for the, that education? Our king uh, had the, the, the common people um, go up to the hills and harvest um, sandalwood. Iliahi is the Hawaiian word, and uh, Iliahi is a fragrant wood that was in demand in China. They used it for uh, spices. Uh, I'm sorry, um, incense, and it's an uh, oily wood that had a beautiful that has a beautiful fragrance. And so they were required. Uh, the commoners or the men were required to harvest huge logs and fill up uh, the size of a ship, enough ship uh, had a value uh, enough to send his son uh, to the mainland, oh, well, not to me, to America, mm -hmm. to receive an education. Now, that's instrumental because that son did not come back for a long time. Mm. As a matter of fact, Kamuli thought he was dead. Wow. As traders came through, he heard that the son didn't make it. Uh, long story short, the captain who took 
uh, Hume Hume um, really didn't give the boy a formal education. And instead, uh, Hume Hume became homeless. He became a servant. Mm. And he also served in the War of 1812. Wow. So um, at that time, um, the trading post was uh, in America was on the New England side in Boston, um, that area, and so as that Hawaiians, was quite a trip. yeah, as Hawaiians got on board um, and became seamen, uh, some of them did not want to come back to Hawaii. They wanted to go back with uh, the ship to America and stay there, mm. and so that's what happened to other Native Hawaiians. And eventually, Hume Hume ends up with. Uh, four other Native Hawaiians whom uh, the Lord used to bring the gospel. So this is Hawaii. obviously, so he leaves when he's six. Yes. So this long period of time. Yes, in 1805. Okay. So that's 15 years later at the age of 21, 21 okay. he comes back. And he comes back on the same ship as the missionaries. And we'll get it back, get into that in a, in a few minutes. Okay. So, um, 18, in 1808, 12 years before the arrival of the uh, missionaries, uh, the Lord used a gentleman, well, a young man by the name of uh, Opukaia. Opukaia, um, the, the Americans call him Henry O. Henry <laughs> Opu. <laughs> Probably a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, could you imagine the guy couldn't speak any English? He had to learn while on the ship as they were going from here to China and back to America. Mm -hmm. And so he, it wasn't a coincidence, but God used a Christian captain and a Christian deck mate uh, to pour into Opukaia. Mm -hmm. Now, Opukaia was uh, um, very instrumental in what transpired here in Hawaii because he came from the lineage of uh, the high priest. Um, he was being trained to become a high priest. Mm -hmm. His father uh, was part of a rebellion against Kamehameha I, who was trying to unite all the islands under one rule. And as he attempted to unite, as he was attempting to conquer by force through his warriors, um, Kamehameha sent his warriors to the big island uh, to squelch that rebellion. And part of that rebellion was Opukaia's father was killed, his mother was killed, and as they were fleeing the warriors, Henry O had his baby brother on his back, and as he was running, the soldiers threw a spear and stabbed his brother while on his back. Mm. So Opukaia grew up from the age of six, knowing that um, uh, uh, he was very depressed, losing his family. He didn't have family. Uh, his uncle ended up raising him at uh, a Heiau to be a priest. Uh, so he was part of the whole religious system back then. And I'll get into the religious system of uh, offering sacrifices, often human sacrifices, and the religious laws that um, back in the day called the Kapu system. Yeah. And now that... Um, so in addition to what he experienced growing up, he also got to experience, you know, human sacrifices. And so Which in time... I've never um, really experienced that. Yeah. By 1808, at a young age, Opukaia, as he uh, could see the trading ships traveling through Kealakekua Bay on the Big Island, um, the big trading ships, he jumps into the ocean and swims out to... Uh, the ship with the captain um, and, and, and he writes later he learns how to write and he documents that he was looking for comfort mm. earnestly looking for comfort and we uh, if you're looking for comfort and truth and purpose we know the Bible says that we will find the truth mm -hmm. and we will find the spirit of comfort God's comfort so he jumps in the water swims up to the ship and the ship captain takes him in, and uh, the boy does not want to go back to the land. Uh, so the captain goes back on land and says, hey, this boy wants to come with me. Um, his uncle refuses, 
And eventually the uncle says, okay, I'll let him go, because they could recognize that he was not. Um, he was uh, he was not wanting to be there. Yeah. And so the uncle lets him go. He becomes part of that um, trading. And when they go to China, they come back to Hawaii. He does not want to come back on the boat. He doesn't want to come back on the land. They go back to America. He gets uh, connected there with, with pastors, Christian leaders. The mm. captain allows him, uh, turns... I give, uh, you know, introduces him to other Christian the ch leaders at the church, and they take him in. Yeah. And for many years, um, he lives there in uh, in um, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. He travels throughout three or four different states: Rhode Island, um, uh, you know, two other states there. I I don't remember. We've been there. We celebrated. We took a tour there, mm -hmm. and. Um, we got to visit the places where he lived, and he had a huge influence on the people. And I'll share a little bit more detail about Opokaia later. But the, that's the image on the screen. Uh, on the bottom left is uh, the warrior with him carrying the baby brother on the mm -hmm. back. And um, Henry O, he, um, he's, he's, he was the guy that God used uh, to... Um, create the Hawaiian alphabet. There was no written language prior mm. to Henry Opokaia. Wow. So as he was uh, in New England, he was uh, wanting learning. He says, I desire learning. I want to learn. Yeah. But no one can teach me. Is that, is there's a huge disconnect with his language and watching others read and write. So they send him to school and eventually uh, he learns uh, through God's people pouring into him through the word of God. And so uh, in, con in, uh, in Connecticut, uh, we got to see a few churches where he, he, he had an influence because he learned the Hebrew mm -hmm. language. He was able to um, create the Hawaiian la written language. Mm -hmm. What he was hearing and, you know, documenting, trying to put it into uh, Hawaiian language yeah. with what he was learning through the English language. You know, so he had to translate all of that. Wow. And he was the guy, he, he wrote the, the book of Genesis wow. in the Hawaiian language. So that was the first um, literate document uh, known uh, from Henry O. And it was the book of Genesis. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool because yeah. you think about it many times, you know, let's just say in our time period of history, when you would think, Okay, we're going to translate. Most would start with the Gospel of John, right, yeah. or something. But he starts with the beginning. Yeah. Let's talk about creation. Let's talk about what God did. Yeah. So eventually, he he um, he creates a journal, and so we know about what transpired here in history through what he wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, he was um, he could imitate his. He had a gift to imitate people. That's how he learned. Yeah. He learned how to how people moved and talked. He would, uh, and that's how he learned the language and so forth. Um, and um, so he, as uh, through his uh, journaling, God used his journaling uh, eventually as um, mm. God started inspiring others in New England uh, that the Lord was going to come back, the second coming of Christ, uh, and the people began to realize the Lord's coming back. And uh, they began to study and read the Bible and pray. And God honored that to the point where they were able to um, organize and create ascending uh, missionaries yeah. to two parts of the world. To Israel, and at that time, in 1820, Israel didn't exist until 1948, right? Yeah. 1820, they knew the uh, nation of Israel did not exist, but they still sent missionaries to the homeland yeah. because they knew Jesus was going to come back. And the other group was to the uh, uh, the ends of the earth here in Hawaii because Opukaia was the man who knew as he was learning about the true God, uh, he wanted his uh, people back home to receive what he received. So this is amazing. So Henry O., or Opokaia, <laughs> sorry if I botched that, <laughs> um, 
he's the he's he is the son that was sent at, when he was six. This is the same no. person. No, Hume Hume. Hume Hume. Okay, was different. Right. Okay, Kamali, King Kamali's son. Okay, Henry O was the son of the warrior. Okay, that got killed, and he wanted to leave, so he jumped in the water and yeah. became a seaman. So the thing I'm wanting to bring up about this is that sometimes you know. We're sitting back, we're looking back over these next several weeks, we'll be looking at history, you know, you, we see the whole picture, right? Yeah. Just like when we read scripture, we, we can see the whole picture. Right. And so sometimes we can read it and we can go, why would they do that, right? Because we see the whole picture, but they don't right. know the whole picture. He, he doesn't right. know the whole picture. He's just like, I got to get out of here, I, right? Exactly. <laughs> In a sense. And yet God, I always say, you know, we... In bringing God to our understanding, he's like this masterful chess player. He moves people yeah. in specific locations at specific times, and he can use what's going on in people's hearts. You yeah. know, We see in his word that it says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and like mm. rivers of water, he can turn it whichever way he wants. Yeah. So that's the heart of a king. Mm. But the amazing thing is, is that here God starts doing something, let's just say yeah. that, um, and he starts, you know, with this uh, captain taking him him on, introducing yeah. him to these pastors. God is just training this kid, let's say, and he grows up, right? But he's training him and he's preparing him. And then even thinking about today's culture, no one writes anymore. In fact, I had to tell my wife, like, you, because we homeschool our kids, and so I was like, make sure, you know, that our kids have to do cursive writing. Mm. <laughs> because... I know they hate it, but <laughs> it's just this point like no one writes anymore. But God uses that. Mm -hmm. God uses his writing, right. his actual writing, um, not only obviously for himself to be able to share, so to say, pour out his heart, let's say that. Yeah. It's, it's a journal. That's many times what you're doing. You're sharing what's going on and sharing what's going on in your heart. But um, God uses that. So it's amazing yeah. how these small things can be overlooked, but God takes those small things, those let's say inclinations of the heart or I'm desperate, I need help. And he just connects us. He connects people to right people because he's, he has an overall picture. Yes. And so what I'm seeing through these little stories so far is ultimately what we know is because of who God is, is that God has a heart for the nation. Yes. Even these little tiny islands in the middle of the Pacific ocean. Yeah. And he starts by actually taking natives and sending them away from the islands. Mm hmm and he gets them trained up and prepared to now bring them back. Right. Correct? That's totally correct. So that's amazing. That's the power of the Holy Spirit yes. preparing the way yes. for the King, the Word of God, to come. Isn't and Henry O doesn't know any of this. He has no idea. He has no idea. And sometimes I, I'm bringing this up because I think that's important for us in our yeah. daily lives. As I share, just trying to always, we want to share a personal, in the sense of like, these past years have been very difficult. Mm. Um, and people have tried to encourage me, you know, um, obviously my wife, you know, it's just, and, and we have to say it, like, God's got a plan. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I right. don't know what it is. But God's got a plan. And we can put our trust in God's word, because that's what his word says. Yeah. Um, and so even when we don't know, even when we don't even have a plan, he's not even trying to think this. But God is instrumenting something. Yeah. He's he is preparing. He's writing the story. Let's yeah. say. Let, you know? let me go for add it. because as he I was indicating that he journals yes. his experiences, and so um, you know it takes a lot of effort to plan and coordinate a mission trip, as oh, you know. Yes, I know it's a lot. Of and emails. so imagine a mission trip. Well, you you know, yeah. launching and you're going for who knows how long. Yeah. And so as they organized, um, you know, Henry O ends up at a place called Yale College, which today is Yale University. Yeah. That's one of the places where um, he was depressed, and these. Uh, Believers, yeah. solid, inspired, uh, world so changers, many of these takes him in. They take him in. Colleges were actually in the beginning biblical, yeah. solid. <laughs> Not today, but they were founded. The president of a college takes him in. Uh, long story short, he gets uh, the education. He's writing. 
as um, they're praying. And then, you know, you go back to uh, Yale, uh, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, that area, and you, you read about all of the things that these special people did uh, for this event called the Second Great Awakening. Mm. And Henry O. was in the middle of it because um, the be- young believers wanted to go, and they were waiting to go, yeah. and then all of a sudden God puts a native Hawaiian in their midst mm. who has a passion for his own people. Amen. And uh, as they're organizing, as they're trying to uh, raise provisions, mm-hmm. financing to provide and send you know, provisions to and from uh, New England to Hawaii, they used Henry's um, memoirs. Mm. Uh, and they begin to send it all over, not only the United States, but eventually it was used to be sent all over the world as part of the sending and uh, getting out, making this uh, to go out to the outermost parts of the world mm. uh, to to make disciples. And so they find his memoirs all over the world. Wow! International, back in the eighteen hundreds. Wow! Because of his heart and his passion. This was years later. This was uh, during that time and later. Okay, uh, even af- during After, time. after, after, uh, yeah, because he died. Okay. He actually died uh, right before uh, the sending uh, mission came to Hawaii, was sent out from Boston. Wow. So, but the work continued. With or without him, the Holy Spirit used three other native, uh, four other native Hawaiians uh, oh. to go from Boston to Hawaii. And again, one of them was Kaumuli's son, Humehume. Wow. <laughs> the original one we were talking about. Who the was original six. one, the six-year-old son. When he came home, um, the father thought he was dead. Uh, right here in Waimea. Wow. Uh, the ship lands. Well, I know we're jumping ahead. I, I really quick. But there's, there's a lot of There's detail. so much. That's yeah. fine. That's why we're going to be doing this. We'll, we'll share that detail <laughs> later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. But I just want to I just want to interject real quick in the sense of that God and he still does this today. Yeah. <clears throat> he takes these local na- native Hawaiians. They go away for quite a while, right? And oh, the days of those days where there was no technology. Like, talk about faith. It wasn't even planned faith. But, you know, God meeting people, raising them up. God having a greater plan. Mm -hmm. And then as they're learning, let's just say this. As they're learning the gospel, as they get saved, as they become believers. Because they didn't start believers, right? They become believers. As they're learning the gospels, they're learning scripture, they're learning these things. What does God do? He stirs in their heart. I love yeah. to bring this good news back to where they're from. Right. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Right. To bring the good news of Jesus back to where you're from. Why? Why? Because you realize they don't have this. Right. They don't know this. Right. And the stirring, part, a big part of the stirring was the second coming of Christ. It's well documented. I can show you a um, sermon, a copy of a sermon. Uh, as the two sending missions were getting ready to be launched yeah. before they left, the sermon was about the second coming of Christ. Well, they well they thought he was coming back yeah. a lot sooner, and we we all do. Yeah, uh, they they kind of set a a time frame. Yeah, <laughs> at, at that time they didn't know any better. Did he? Again, Israel didn't even exist. But yeah, yeah second coming of Christ. So we. That's, um, we'll get into eschatology yeah. and all that stuff. There's this, but there's this thing with the expectancy of his return. Amen. So Amen. with that, that, that actually drove mission. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> drove the gospel. Yeah. Christ is coming back. We need to get the gospel out. Yes. We need to bring the gospel, the good news of Jesus, it's good people. We got to get this. Amen. Out. Time is okay. short. Okay. Signs are clear. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. So, um, eighteen ten, Kamehameha is the one that remember I mentioned. He yes. unites the, uh, the, the 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 islands, the island, which I know has to be a whole other story. But <laughs> that alone is pretty amazing. Correct? Yes. Uh, the thing about Kamehameha is uh, he paves the way for safe travel. In other words, it was not safe to travel. Missionaries between, between islands, between islands, even from one 
uh, Moku, or one Kuliana to another, it wasn't safe. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he established a law called the Law of the Splintered Paddle. Basically, it allowed um, people to travel mm. safely without being mugged or robbed and all the things that come along with it. Mm -hmm. And so he paves the way for safe travel. Just now, for people to be able to come to the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. Just anybody, pretty much. Yeah. And even the between islands. Right. Okay. As the... So um, God's doing something over here right. while he's preparing people to come over. Right. Exactly. Okay. And, and all at that same time, now, remember now, 1778, the, the, the traders come through. Mm -hmm. The whalers. Um, um, the sugar planters. Um, they were trading all kinds of things. China. Mm -hmm. uh, the products from China. Um, so that so was well before? That was way well before. So you had, there was this protocol. When you came with your ship, you would wait. And Kamehameha's warriors would go with their canoes out to the ship and communicate and uh, probably negotiate um, what they could. Uh, taxes. Yeah, <laughs> what, yeah taxes or what, what have you. And yeah. trade, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. And so in 1819, Kamehameha dies. Mm. Uh, and as, uh, that, this is significant because at that time, um, it was, uh, war, there was war. There was a lot of war. Um, and in 18, uh, there was that kapu system, that religious system of human sacrifices. It was polyistic gods. Mm -hmm. They worshipped a lot of the creation mm -hmm. rather, rather than the creator. <laughs> Men and women couldn't eat together. They call that the Ai Kapu. Um, and also, um, so that's what that image is on the top. And also on the bottom uh, is an image of a human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, I know I'm kind of slowly interjecting, but it's just the point of like the brutality of men. What's going on here on the islands. Yeah. And so... This is happening before, during, and after he dies, Kamehameha? This is before. Before. Right. Okay. Now, the traders were here for 30, and they, they recognized they, a lot of these traders didn't honor the kapu, kapu system, so they noticed that if they did eat fish or food mm -hmm. that were prohib prohibited, uh, for the common people, then nothing happened to the traders, the outsiders, mm -hmm. that they recognized, you know, that law of forbidding to eat bananas or what have you. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing happened. So the kapu system was losing its power. Mm -hmm. And right after Kamehameha dies, uh, Liho Liho, um, uh, him, uh, it was the next in line for power along with uh, Kamehameha for the first, his favorite wife, Kaahumanu, and um, Keopuolani, who came from a lineage of uh, power, of lineage of power. So basically, um, they, Liu Liu and Kaahumanu, sat and ate together and realized, and the people realized, hey, if they can eat together, the, the kapu system is no longer, um, there's no longer power. There's no power to it. Right. And so um, that system is abolished mm. within one year prior to the arrival wow. of the, the, the Word of God. That religious system is, was void one year prior to the arrival mm. of God's Word. It was not a, I don't think it was a coincidence, but basically it was God preparing the way for the people to be ready to receive the gospel, the mm -hmm. good news. And so, um, wow. um, right at the same time, uh, the couple system was being abolished. Um, in 1819, the missionaries are sent. It took almost seven months to go by ship, seven Thaddeus, months. seven months from Boston down the Horn, mm -hmm. South America, all the way to Hawaii. Almost seven months. Those are the, the when we talk about missionary days, yes. like today, if we were to go to Europe, I just talked to some Germans yesterday, 
and it's pretty much like 19 hours uh -huh. like travel from here there you know yeah seven months seven months so think about all that happens for yeah. seven months yeah. on the ship as you're preparing to go right. you don't this is not some flight <laughs> right and they you see they were told by um henry O mm -hmm. of how brutal Hoy yeah. was yeah what the religious couple so that's what they're they, they had no idea so then so then okay we they have to no bring idea. that <laughs> right, right. they're going they that means they have to be going with the knowledge of we could give our lives for this. Right. There was no telephone, yes, no yes. internet, <laughs> yes. no same-day delivery. It no took, message. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. long it took for the mail to go from Hawaii yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. back home. So months. they're going with the knowledge of we got to go and we're willing to give our lives. Exactly. That's powerful. Exactly. And so there's a total of seven couples, uh, missionary couples. Uh, one of the couples had five children. Mm -hmm. So seven couples, that's 14, plus five children, 19, mm -hmm. and four native Hawaiians. Henry O died uh, around 1819 before. Right and before. so there's three native Hawaiian seamen who got saved yeah. and were inspired to come back to Hawaii. And one of them was share the, gospel. the king's son. The fourth one was the king's son. Um, we're not sure... There's no documentation about um, you know, him as a believer. Uh, but when the missionaries came, um, as they were preparing to come to Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, the missionaries had, I believe it's Wycliffe. Wycliffe, yeah. The Bible um, oh. pr producers yes. that created a yes. special yes. Bible for Hawaii. Yes. And so... By the way, just want to say, go ahead. you brought the Bible for Hawaii. Yes. And so... By the way, just want to say, you brought up Wycliffe. If you guys do not know about Wycliffe, you w w y c l i f f e. You have to look up this ministry, um, and the fact that Henry O. wrote the the Hume Hume, our King's son wrote Genesis. We could. Uh, oh no no! I was just bringing up Genesis. First. Okay, okay okay okay. So bringing up Genesis. Okay. Okay, so this is where it starts because he's the one you told me that. Um, brings the the writing right. any language the writ let's say the written language he's right. the one that starts it correct right okay that's what Wycliffe is all about is bringing the word of God into languages that have not been written mm. anyways you guys got to check them out amazing so now then what you're saying is Hume Hume is, he's connected with Wycliffe Hume Hume writes, he heard, he heard that uh, Wycliffe, Wycliffe yeah. was creating a Bible for Kamehameha. Wow. Okay? So he writes his own letter to Wycliffe saying, hey, my father is a king. Yes. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Chris Cook, who lives here, a uh, Christian Hawaiian historian, mm -hmm. uh, he actually has a, uh, he went, he, he, as he's doing his, uh, you know, research in yeah. the archives. He opens a book, and out of the book, there's the letter that Hume Hume wrote. And he took a photo. I believe he has a copy of it. Wow. But basically, um, he uh, he writes Wycliffe asking them to produce another Bible for his father, who is also a king. And that Bible was presented as they arrived in Hawaii. It was presented as the gift, as the word of God yeah. to the king. Um, and so, uh, so I, I, I know you want to jump ahead, but we're <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna kind of do a couple things here. We're gonna okay, leave go people ahead. hanging, <laughs> but we're gonna okay. Go ahead. Um, talk about this because we have so many Bibles. In fact, I've been writing. Um, anyways, I have. I'm. Uh, I'm waiting for this box of Bibles that have that are from all different languages and a whole bunch, of obviously English ones. We have access to God's Word like no other today, and we have it on our phones, right, on the apps. But there's still people today who do not have 
the written word in their language. Yeah. And so when we talk about the missionaries coming, this is I'm, I'm just trying to cor correlate because we're running out of time. Is bringing this whole story because we're literally like bringing about the word of God getting to the Hawaiian Islands, and I think that will be a good place to go into next week. Mm -hmm. But God does this whole work in the Hawaiian Islands. He does it by sending uh, Hume Hume, right? Hume Hume. Hume Hume. Sorry, sorry. No, not to be confused with Hume Hume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hume Hume. He sends him. He's got Henry. Oh, he's doing all this work. He prepares these missionaries' hearts. And I just want to say something about the missionaries' hearts. Um, you talked about the seven couples. So that's 14. The one family's got the five kids. Um, I just want to say, when, you, when you're going to start a work, start with the team. Mm -hmm. I just want to say it um, before we even planted a church. A really good friend of mine who was a missionary for years too, he said, Joey, Jesus sent them out two by two, and you and your wife are one. Mm -hmm. You need other people. Mm -hmm. There is something about sending a team. Jesus sent them out two by two. Having a team to start a new work, so important. Okay, these are, these are things that are so important. I'm just bringing them up because this is what God did. Mm -hmm. And what I believe he continues to do mm -hmm. is that when you're wanting to start something new, don't do it by yourself. Mm. There's many reasons for that. Well, I'm right. not going to go into it, but he does it with a team of people. He does it with children. Right. He does it with natives. We already talked about that. Right. He brings all these things together. And what is he ultimately bringing? The Word of God, mm -hmm. which is powerful, living, active, has the ability to pierce between the <laughs> bone and marrow, you know, the soul and the spirit, just God's Word that is alive. And we take God's Word for granted. Mm -hmm. I know I do. Yeah. So, um, when the missionaries arrive, yeah. Kamehameha's warriors goes out on their canoes to approach the ship. They're talking Hawaiian because... Yes, of course. Missionary ship has Hawaiians. So they're communicating, and they're communicating the couple system is done. There's, no, there's no Kamehameha, but there is liho liho, kahumano, kiopulani. Um, the, so the missionary ship, the Thaddeus, yeah. is docked out of uh, Kauai Hai, um, on the Big Island. And they have to wait a whole month before they receive permission to come on land. So as soon as they get permission, yeah. um, the leader of the missionary team, uh, Hiram Bingham, um, decides to... Um, um, you know, leave a few behind and send the rest to Kauai because Hume Hume has a Bible for his father so the work can continue. They, they didn't know where they are going to end up. Yeah. They thought they are all going to be together. Yeah. But when they find out, they had to wait on the big island mm -hmm. and then they had to, um, they got permission. Uh, but it was a one-year short-term um, permission. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the year, um, they would reevaluate and so forth. Yeah. And so they, they make a quick decision to, to let a few missionaries off on the big island. They go from there to Kauai. They end up, they landed here in Waimea, wow. right outside uh, the Waimea River, wow. where the he, uh, King Kaumuli lives, right next to the Heiau, Paula Ula. And as uh, they dock, the warriors and their canoes goes out to the Thaddeus. They talk Hawaiian. The natives say, Hume, Hume, come now. Your father is there. And the father didn't expect his son to arrive. He, so he thought he was dead. dead. So as they bring the son on land, that's the image I show. Uh, if we can show the image back yeah. in um, th this one here. Uh, the top, mm. um, that's Hume Hume on the left, bottom left, the father is on the bottom right, and the top um, was a painting by a gentleman named, I believe it's Brooke, and uh, he, uh, you see the, um, the king, now they embrace, and the father cannot 
they both cannot maintain their composure. Of course. The father cannot maintain his com composure all night until the next day. Then he, um, he embraces not only the son, and he ends up telling the missionaries who are with their, you see them with, the photo, their son. with the son. With the son. He says, you take care of my son all these years. I thought he was dead. And now you, my Ohana, you, wow. my family. So right there, if you look at Waimea on the Paula Ula side of the river, yeah. that was considered the sacred part of the land because that's where the king lived. Yes. And you couldn't even get, go into the presence or uh, let his shadow uh, be in the, in the shadow or else that would be cause for death. So as the um, Kamuli says, you my Ohana, yeah. I'll take care of you. That sacred side of the land where the Heia was, mm -hmm. Kamuli gives to the missionary to set up their first mission house. And eventually they build um, a place for the people to come and learn about God. Now, that Bible that Kamali receives, he cherished it. As a matter of fact, they see him, I know we're running out of time, yeah. but I want to close with this. They see him on a canoe with Bingham uh, reading the Bible to Kamali. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God. And Kamal E responds, he says, Now this is the word of God. Yes. This is God. Uh, there's a lot of details. I'm, I'm going to show the evidence of the letters from Kamal E. The Queen, Kap Kapiolani, Keopuolani, Kaahumanu, um, Liho Liho. I'm going to share uh, the evidence of what they wrote. What did they say about the missionaries, what did they say about the Word of God? Wow. And, and when they got saved, um, they, they required, um, um, they wanted the people to learn how to read and learn how to read the Word of God. And as they're reading the Word of God, the Spirit uses the Word of God to bring transformation and that, that was part of the second great awakening hawaii's great awakening to the point where there was a census taken in i believe 1860 and nine over 90 percent of the people declared their religion to be christian and the largest church christian church was on the big island uh, a city of only three thousand people in hilo the church is called haili church um uh, over 10,000 people travel days, hours, sometimes days, to go to church on Sunday. 10,000 people wow. for, at a, in a little town that only had 3,000 people to hear the Word of God. Yes. Now, four, uh, I'm going to end with this. There's, four, <laughs> there's five um, major impacts that the missionaries uh, brought to Hawaii. Number one, Christianity. Number two, literacy. Why did not have a written language, um, and so uh, missionaries helped to develop uh, the written language, and then to teach. They came skilled. They were teachers. They were evangelists. They were skilled people, um, able to teach um, the Bible. So um, Christianity, literacy, music. When they heard harmonies, yeah. Nahimene. Yeah. They wanted to come to church, awesome. and they had this little air uh, organ yeah. uh, that they could use. So when they heard harmonies, um, they were they were blown away. So that is the root of Hawaiian music today, is from Nahime, wow. the missionaries. So music. The fourth one is um, governance. There was a Christian that helped the Ali'i to create a constitution. Mm -hmm. to, for uh, Hawaii to become its own nation um, and their own constitution. So that's the fourth one. And the fifth one is, uh, I don't remember, but you're going to have to tune in next week okay. to hear what the fifth one is. Man, this is so amazing. I just want to quote, I'm trying to find the verse. I'll have to look it up. But the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And like mm -hmm. rivers of water, he turns it whichever way he wants.
the fact that the king says to this missionary leader, you took care of my boy, you're now part of our ohana, that that happens right away, yeah. is a work of God's spirit. Amen. Because it, you can't just jump into a culture that quick and be accepted that yeah. quick. But that is what God does. Yeah. That is the work of his spirit. That is the work. And so, guys, we're just getting going. This is just amazing. And it's an amazing work of the Holy Spirit preparing the hearts of people, ending one system that was destroying people, right? Mm -hmm. Opening up the island so that there was the ability to travel, right? So that mm -hmm. people could come. Um, sending native Hawaiians away to who will eventually come back, preparing the, 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 the written language, um, all this work. And this is exactly what he wants to do in our lives as well today. Amen. Let us never see or miss out that on the day-to-day -day that God is at work. Um, we are, uh, it's easy to not see it. Amen. But in the different things that we do, you and I, um, God is at work preparing hearts. And so I'm just going to pray. Yes. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done. Um, this is just, I'm so excited. This is just the beginning of what we're going to be sharing. But as we look back, we can rejoice for what you've done and how you use your people, natives, foreigners, uh, working in the hearts of kings, um, tearing down a system um, that brought destruction, preparing the heart of a people to receive that which gives life, your word. And so we ask that you continue to use this and do a work today afresh as we just bring the truth of what you've done in the past. Do it here on the Hawaiian Islands and throughout your, just throughout the world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joey. Mahalo. Uh, Lon, thank you so much. Guys, tune in. Share this with, please get this out. Share it with people. And um, we got more coming. Aloha. Aloha.